the poster that Dan chose to put together for this show is a very old photo from maybe our first time playing here. This was 10 years ago or so now. Uh, I can remember what everybody's wearing so clearly. Look at that prince-like hair. I remember this electric blue sweater I was wearing. We used to stick flowers in our headstock and drums, as you can see here. Well, I you can see the you. photographer had no problem getting access to the front yeah. of the stage. <laughs> doing three shows in Toronto. The idea was to start at a smaller venue, then do like a medium venue, then do a big venue. Then we started talking about where we could do that first show. There's only so many venues in Toronto of this sort of size that have been around as long as the Silver Dollar that have like the kind of musical history as the Silver Dollar and our memories here too and the amount of times that we've played here. And if you're from Toronto and if you're if you like going to shows and stuff, the dollar is just the place where everybody's seen a show here. Everybody has like good memories here and we just thought it'd be a cool way to come back home and do this thing, especially now looking at like yeah, it's been ten years or so since we kind of started playing in Toronto. One of our first shows was here too. So it just kind of brings it all full circle. It is set up in a funny like line like you're in this crazy like you're, you're playing you are like whether you want to or not you're playing to the bartender because they're right there but still it's like oh man it's just all it does to me it's just like nostalgia for me when you're playing a small room like this too it's gonna be to you know a bunch of people that we know and a bunch of our friends are gonna be here so it has more of that familiar vibe Part of the routine is the like waking up feeling like you didn't get enough sleep feeling shitty feeling hungover getting in the van i'm just realizing now that i'm still hungover i think i don't know when i even got drunk <laughs> do it all again still hungover to me like my memories of toronto and the way we kind of started the band here and started playing at the Bagel and Rancho Relaxo. And then when we got the Silver Dollar gig, it, that was like kind of a big deal. The first show we played here would have been like the next jump up for yeah. us, for sure. So it was kind of like, yeah, it does feel like it was Silver Dollar. And then we played here as like a big step for Born Ruffians. And then Opera House was the next big step. Yep. It actually is a really cool feeling. Like going from last night at the Silver Dollar and walking in and kind of checking out the venue before we started. And then today doing that same thing, but it's a little bit bigger. There's a really, I mean, you really feel the progression, the whatever it is, the thing that we intended to do, you really do when you walk in. And then it'll feel the same way tomorrow. And then if you just keep doing it, then it's the Megadome after that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> There's something about Lee's Palace that it's just such a great, like, rock venue. To me, it is my favorite. It just seemed like a no-brainer. Well, as you can see, Lee's Palace, palatial, aptly named, um, decadent. It's really weird. Like, I don't know if I've ever really been in a venue with this kind of sight lines and a pit like it has. And It's a very bizarre setup, but it's... it's Cool. I mean, like, it's the per to me the perfect, like, combination of bar and venue. Because, like, the high ceiling kind of aspect of a venue, plus you're in, like, a gnarly rock bar. I saw Dirty Projectors here. Oh, they yeah. They were great. I saw Grizzly Bear here, Grizzly too. Grizzly Bear. I saw Ryan Adams play, and uh, Elton John did a guest. He did a what? Yeah. Wow. Seriously, it was crazy. Cool. We saw Super Chunk in, I don't know when that was, but a friend of mine really didn't want to lose his spot in the front row, so he just peed his pants. <laughs> <laughs> he really had to pee. <laughs> Uh, yeah, Lee's Palace, how would I rank the backstage? Well, Here's it's nice, the, it's private, there's two floors. Yeah. It's cool because there's a window on the second yes. floor that you can watch the bands. And okay, like, that's one aspect I really do like about it. It makes you feel like you're in like a tiny apartment, mm -hmm. a band apartment, watching the goings on on the street down below, yeah. which is always a rock show. But there's uh, no bathroom. Everybody pees in the alley here though, right? Like, it's oh, probably man. not allowed to, but I just pee in the alleyway. Yeah, especially, like, like, after... A lot of celebrity pees back there. Yeah. Who's I mean, pee? His, Elton John's pee is definitely back there. Pee. He's just taking a leak before doing Rocket Man. <laughs> Am I on yet? Well, I should probably preface this by saying I'm not proud of this story. It's not like I'm telling this to brag and uh, never do this, ever. I was, like, 19 at Lee's Palace, and I was, we went to the dance cave. Just got really drunk up there, and then as we were leaving... And being drunk with like that thing in your brain that tells you not to follow your stupid 
impulses. So you walked down right into Lee's Palace before you exited, and Lee's Palace was completely empty. And uh, I saw the, the fridges of beer back here, and I just kind of strolled in, walked behind the bar, opened the fridge, grabbed like, I don't know, six 50s, shoved them in my jacket, and just like closed it up and walked out the front door. And I'd like to formally apologize to Lee and his palace for stealing those beers and I intend to repay them someday. Don't, don't ever do that, kids. Don't be like your Uncle Luke. We went to shows a lot in Toronto in high school. We'd drive into Toronto to see shows and saw a lot at the Opera House. And that was always a place that was like, maybe someday we'll yeah. get a headline there. It just makes sense that it was these three venues because historically for the continuity of Born Ruffians, that's just kind of the, the three major steps that it felt like we took. The Opera House itself, we've been to a million times before we even lived in the city, just coming to see bands and we drive down to see the Libertines. I saw Spoon here. I saw... I think Hot Hot Heat. Hot Hot Heat. I do, like, vividly remember, yeah, coming in here and just feeling this awesome, exciting presence. I don't know. There's something more authentic or something about this. It's less sterile. It's got character. It's got weird shit on the walls. <laughs> here. It's just you feel more of a presence of, like, something awesome is going to happen here. The backstage... Yeah, I have a memory of the first time going down there, just assuming when we were watching the Libertines that they were like, like in a palace backstage. It must like, be amazing. Oh, let's do some coke, just for go and play show. <laughs> but like, they were in this, when you go downstairs and you're just like, oh, this is where those guys are hanging out? And you brought me down to reality, but it's just like a basement with some exposed pipes and it's yeah. just like kind of low ceilings and you're just kind of like, oh, it's nicer upstairs, let's go upstairs. <laughs> <laughs> but it's nice, it's nice to have a space to just put your Oh yeah, like that's the private that's jacket the area. There's a toilet there. There's also, yeah, a dank-ass moldy shower there, which I'm sure is still there and disgusting right now. I try and sing before we play, like I try and sing Roger Miller songs, or usually turns out to be the same songs every night. Now we all kind of sing along, I guess, sometimes, if everybody's back. I love the sing-along. Yeah. I like, I, that's my favorite part. So, I think just night after night, it just became like part of the thing. Mitch takes his pants off. I Pant sing the Roger pants Miller. Off. Luke sings me a song. We're ready to play. There's like peaks and valleys on tour for sure where it's just like one day can be a million things of feeling insane in the van to hitting a breaking point and being so tired to being just wanting to lose it on stage and then it's an amazing show and then after that you have like adrenaline and then you go to bed and have to get up at five o'clock or whatever and you're like what was that that was crazy and then it just happens over and over again and it is just a repetitive kind of cycle and i don't know i think our tour diaries kind of maybe showed how we were losing our minds a little bit and it's just this hilarious thing that you are on and it doesn't it won't stop you always just want your next thing to come from a place of true inspiration and whatever it is you want to be behind it 100% creatively and not just doing it not just doing it because you should be doing it you want to make sure you're but. doing it out of a place of like love and that's coming from somewhere real which is why that last record felt so yeah. good it was really just this huge desire and this huge thing that we just needed to get out there and we needed to make it and we needed to make it this specific way and it just felt really good and uh, so the next thing has to also be that and it has to be better <laughs> 